Hello, hello guys, welcome back. I just finished planting these tropicals here, some of them. You'll notice uh, they're not all there. That's because I planted mm, about one third. So we went from 30 trees down to 20. Yeah, so let's go and see where the other 10 have gone. Yep, you guessed it. Where else, right? Where else would 10 tropical fruit trees go in ground when there's uh, no room? anywhere except here so I uh, did it in a two stage um, job so uh, yesterday I dug the holes with a pick and that was a backbreaker and today I just plopped them in the holes when I was fresh and rested so I'm not, not trying to uh, overexert myself, guys. You know, you know how you want to finish a job? I'm so much like that. And I thought, hmm, is it uh, worth it? So I stopped when the holes were dug and decided to finish the job today. And here it is, completo. I bet many of you have been... Uh, on the edge of your seats <laughs> wanting to see what I planted well so was I because really I wasn't sure to the last second I think I've made the right decisions some of you will um, will say uh-uh you shouldn't have planted that you shouldn't have planted that you should have planted that that's bound to happen 100% I'm waiting for it <laughs> Anyway, let's start to let's start the uh, mini tour of what I put in the ground. Basically, I went with the safest ones, right? I did my research. I've seen other people's uh, channels in uh, not, is uh, zone nine B. Okay, not Eri. She keeps insisting that she's in nine B, but she's not, because um, if she's in nine B, I should I should be planting. Star Apple and uh, Sour Sop, but I can't. Why? Because I'm in 9B, not her. Simple as that, guys. So uh, I put in uh, Longan, Jompu, grafted. This guy I had in the uh, in the uh, greenhouse all winter, and he came through like a champ, as you can see here with the uh, with the flowers. So. He made winter, he's flowering, you know what that means, don't you? He's ready to go in the ground in uh, zone 9B, or probably zone 9A as well. Possibly zone 8B, where Thomas is, with some protection. So, that's the first tree. And this one gets the most sun. Okay, another thing I need to tell you guys is... Uh, I have uh, a big tree, it's not mine, it's the neighbor's neighbor, neighbor's neighbor pine tree, right? And that's where the sun comes out in the morning, right here at 6 a.m., right there. And then by 10, it's there. And now that it's 11 a.m., where is it? Where are you? Is right there somewhere. Yeah. So at 11 a.m., 11.30, the first sun hits this area. So we lose about four hours of morning sun. Actually, we'll lose the whole morning. The whole morning's lost because of that pain. Should be a law against planting pine trees in urban metro areas. All right, tree number two. This little guy, he also survived winter in the greenhouse. So whoever is a survivor of winter gets to take the honor of going in the ground. 
it, me it means I have confidence. This is the uh, the Poshti custard apple at the Moya. There's these old leaves from last summer, still hold holding on to them. How many are there? Three, four, five. He's got five leaves from last year. And these are all the new ones that came this spring, a couple of months ago. Okay, so I have full confidence in this guy going in the ground. I already have a custard apple in the ground. The uh, Paxton's prolific, but that one is, um, I had that in the pot for uh, four to five years. So he was more than ready. And he was also like um, two meters high when I put him in the ground. Not, <laughs> this guy's below my knee, right? He's below my knee. So I rushed him in. Third, number three is starfruit one, starfruit two. Okay, two starfruits, carambola, side by side. And they're both grafted. And one of them was even flowering and still is. I got these from Dailies only a couple of months ago. I don't expect any action in the first um, summer. So, yeah, these are pretty hardy to our weather here as well. Remember, the lowest temperature we get in my 9B <coughs> is uh, um, 28 to 30 Fahrenheit. That's the lowest we get. But that happens like every other year. Normally, the lowest is 32 to 34, the normal lowest. So not a problem. So two star fruits. Next, this guy. You recognize it from the leaves. I've got two of these and now they're both in the ground. The other one is underneath the tamarind, the native tamarind. And I just picked this up as well from Dailies about three months ago. And it's the uh, the green sapoti seedling. Full confidence in this guy. Um, doing well in ground. Not a problem. Next is the dwarf Nagasaki Wazi Loquat. And of course, this is the toughest out of the whole group. Not a problem whatsoever. Nada. This guy can go down to 20, you know, low, the low 20s. 24, 25 um, Fahrenheit. I'm doing Fahrenheit because uh, many of the people who are watching and commenting are in America. Very, very few Aussies um, that are active on the channel recently. So I'm going to stick to uh, Fahrenheit. <coughs> well, I'll give some Celsius too. So anyway, that one's the, the easiest out of the lot. Next, another easy one. This is a dwarf as well. A dwarf macadamia. That's the um, A16 from a cutting. To complement the 10-year-old um, seedling that I have which um, isn't doing much. Let's see what this guy does. It'll be interesting to see the difference with a 10-year-old and a one-year-old macadamia. <laughs> so far, so good, guys, right? You're all in agreement with what I've planted. We have, we, <laughs> I left the, the hard ones till, till the end. Next is this little guy. This is a very slow grower extremely slow here where I am some of you have had a lot of luck with sapodia in the first year and the second year guess what I've had this guy for five years and he's only at my knee knee high five years in a pot can you believe it that's my 9b that's my 9b my 9b is completely different to your 9b okay 
next um, is this guy now this one will be a, a slight challenge and so will that one the last one and the reason why this will be a challenge is because they're sensitive to frost more than all the rest of them right but guys I'm gonna take a gamble and there's two reasons why I'm taking a gamble with these last ones it's because they both survived our winter in the greenhouse like champions right they're in their third year that one they're possibly in its fourth year third or fourth that's the Rolinia, by the way okay look at look at the trunk look at that it's um, thicker than my thumb here's the thickest out of all the trees I've planted here in this new bed and this one in case you didn't recognize it is the canistel seedling and uh, I believe the Rulinia is a seedling too yeah so the Rulinia is a seedling this is a seedling the um, Sapodia there is a seedling and you know what it, what seedlings but advantage there are with seedlings right over grafted in um, sensitive climates well I'm not gonna go through that you should know so there they are and uh, in between all this I put in a couple of bananas right a couple of uh, taro and a couple of um, passion fruit I decided to put a second passion fruit to complement the um, um, the sweetheart the sweetheart is grafted which some of you know could be a problem with um, runners and uh, I planted a non grafted variety from Bunnings Bunnings is Australia's Home Depot it's um, a black from Nelly Kelly so and he's already taken off Wow cool so guys two passion fruit two bananas jeez uh, um, uh, blue Java the so-called ice cream banana the first one I've ever had got it from Daly's and the Grand Nain I believe is this one an offshoot of the Cavendish <coughs> which I'm not familiar with it I know the, well, we all know the Cavendish but I don't know this one so and the Taro's Pacific Taro which I had in pots for the last couple of months and they did well but it was time to come out come out come out and start growing so the dilemma is um, <clears throat> there's a few of them lack of sunshine in the morning for this whole area the Sun comes at noon between 11 30 and 12 in summer we're talking not winter I don't know what's gonna happen in winter because of that tree there this nightmare and um, the other dilemma is frost protection in winter <clears throat> the new fence will provide some protection of course I'm thinking of putting uh, I'm gonna talk about this in autumn anyway I'm thinking of putting um, some protection from here all the way to here to this um, post and then wrapping it up all the way down there and across at the end and closing it off to the wind just the wind not to um, frost but to wind cold wind is um, nasty especially for six months remember we get nasty weather here from um, late April to um, 
late September, um, early October. Yeah, nasty. You want to talk about getting into the 40s for one month? Are you kidding me? How about getting into the 40s for six months? That's a true zone 9. Okay, one month of 40s is not zone 9, that's zone 10. Let's get real. <clears throat> so, um, what else? That's about it. And to wrap it up, I still have, um, oh yeah, this dilemma as well. Dilemma number three. And that is um, dealing with these um, X hedge um, roots. I've tried, guys. I've tried. I've tried. It won't come. It won't come. But I wasn't going to hold back for the whole summer and lose precious time. Not being able to get these guys out. See that one under the fence? It won't budge. He's lodged. And that one there. Lodged. Not budging. Crowbar. You name it. I've tried everything. The only thing that will help will be those uh, saws. You know those... I forget the name of them. But it's a sideways saw. That can cut into there. But it won't get rid of it. It'll just make it shorter. You know, cut it evenly at the fence. But it'll still be alive on the other side of the fence. It's not the end of the problem. It just removes this side right that's all and there's that one too so I've got about three or four along the fence this one looks like it's dying or did I kill it yeah but um, I'll have to deal with this another time I can't muck around with um, that and ignore the bigger picture and in closing um, this whole area gets uh, late afternoon sun which the rest of the garden doesn't and the reason for that is see that pine tree up there from the other neighbor that one there he blocks off sun to the whole garden the whole the whole garden the whole garden um, ceases to get sun at around uh, 4 to 5 p.m. Yep, 4 to 5 p.m. it's all over. But this area here does not cease to get sun. It gets sun all the way till um, 7 p.m. Yeah, so it gets around two or three hours of late sun, which the rest of the garden does not get. So that's sort of, kind of, um, balances the lack of sunshine in here in the morning Kinda now we're talking summer Sun. I don't know what's gonna happen in winter So that leaves me now with 23 uh, truly tropical plants That will have to um, stay here in full Sun until April right and enjoy that um, UV <laughs> until um, the first frost comes in April and uh, then it will have to be greenhouse I don't know how I'm gonna get 23 um, pots in the greenhouse plus uh, another six or seven that are on their way I've ordered some more yes I ordered some more so um, hmm but one thing's for sure these were not ready to go in the ground we're talking uh, lychee we're talking jackfruit we're talking um, avocado baby avocado we're talking my mesa podi we're talking one two three mangoes four mangoes uh, barbados cherry right rosa podi allspice abu another jackfruit achacha um, another lychee and um, star apple these are definitely not ready to go in the ground. None of them. Right? And the reason why the mangoes aren't ready is because they're grafted. I'm never planting a grafted mango again in the ground. I've lost about 20 over the last 8 years. I'm not making that mistake again. Grafted Kensington Pride. Dead after 2 years in the ground. Grafted Parvin Mango. Dead after one and a half years in the ground 
grafted R2E2 mango dead after one year in the ground now in pot trying to get the rootstock to grow another grafted Kensington pride mango dead in a pot trying to resuscitate another dead grafted Kensington pride mango growing back from the rootstock the only grafted mango that has survived beyond two years is this Glen right with full protection from uh, two garages mine and the neighbors and this fence and it's got 22 mangoes on it that will probably fall but I'm hoping to get at least um, well two three four five would be nice after uh, six or seven years that it's been there right so I got lucky with this guy but not with the others I showed you not like putting the ground like in uh, zone 10 and bang you got a fruiting mango it doesn't work like that here you saw the other ones I showed you that's what you get so I decided from 2020 onwards to plant only seedlings guys seedlings uh-huh I should have known this 10 years ago I heard about it like they told me uh, around eight six to eight years ago seedlings are tougher but you'll wait longer for the fruit right with a grafted mango you'll get fruit within two or three years or, or even quicker but they told me also that um, this guy can take five to ten years of fruit the seedling and I said nah I don't like that I want my mango next year not in ten years so that's why I went down that path big mistake if you're in uh, zone 9 trust me um, go by my uh, mistakes and uh, experience I'm not talking zone 10 we're talking zone 9 look at this look at this champion huh and this has only been in the ground for three months October what is it no two months can you imagine this guy a year from now he'll be up to here and possibly um, well not he's not gonna be fruiting but possibly uh, doing better than the Glen as far as um, in size and mind you he's not getting any protection at all like the Glen is there's no garage there's no fence there's nothing it's only these trees these trees that are protecting him and mind you this in winter drops its leaves um, um, this one doesn't that one does uh, the cussed apple that drops its leaves uh, at the end of winter so the point is guys um, learn from my mistakes thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed today's video it went on a bit because I was very excited to show you what I did in the X hedge space see you from the next video